If you pre-order games, you're the problem with this industry. You're rewarding poor business practices for nothing in return. Why would you take that abuse? When will you learn? Other companies are just going to follow their lead. So stop pre-ordering games. That's what I would say if I agreed, but I don't. Here's why. Both John and Eric have a point here. If consumers stop pre-ordering games, the industry will have to adapt. It could be demos, it could be episodic formats, or it could be completed games on release. The idea that if we withheld our money in protest is a valid one. There's a strong caveat here, however. We have to be very vocal about why we are not pre-ordering the game. The industry can't just guess on every game they release on what needs to be fixed. If we clearly deliver our feedback in a constructive manner, in addition to not pre-ordering, we can enact change. But this is where the slippery slope begins. Games are a form of art. You, the developers, and I all have different viewpoints on art. It's only natural that when we withhold our money from the game to deliver our feedback, some of that will take the artistic nature. Let's take Horizon Zero Dawn, for example. This is a game that has a wonderful atmosphere and a beautiful world design. What if the overwhelming majority of the feedback pre-launch was, Horizon is going in a very good direction, however I feel the world would fit better in a prehistoric dinosaur setting because XYZ. This feedback could hit the nail on the head, but still tackle a very subjective topic. How does a developer react to this feedback when they are X percent into development? With not a single soul pre-ordering their game, do they change the direction of the game to appeal to the masses? Do they take the risk and stick to their vision at what may be the death of their game and potentially the dismantling of their studio? Just think about that for a bit. We could lose wonderfully artistic games to mass appeal. Remember Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and the cell shaded graphics? The voice was loud in opposition of the visual change, including myself. How much time, money, passion, and charm would the developers and the game itself lose from the cell shading going away? Now I'm sure you're thinking to yourself that art is too subjective and it's not a good enough example. Let me tackle another one. What are some of the most beloved games out there that just spit in your face with their game design and mechanics? I know you can think of a few, but I have one specific example. The Dark Souls franchise. The world loves these games and rightfully so. It's one of the most difficult game franchises to release in a long time and essentially created its own subgenre. So what happens if the pre-launch feedback is, Dark Souls could be an extremely enjoyable game if the difficulty was toned down a lot. Furthermore, I don't believe trash mobs should respawn and you should be able to save at any time you want. Are you freaking out yet? Something so core to the Dark Souls franchise like its difficulty being toned down so the masses can get through it with an easier time. It's a ludicrous thing to think about, but I view this as a very feasible reaction to Dark Souls. Gamers don't want their games dumbed down, but gamers can also be very opinionated about what they want. Before I move on, let me give you one last example. Persona 5 is arguably one of the greatest RPGs that many have had the pleasure of playing. How would you feel if the pre-launch feedback stated, Previous Persona games have been way too long because XYZ. Please reduce the game's length closer to 30 hours instead of 100 plus hours. How does the consumer feel about that? How does the developer feel about that? Let me make it clear that there are definitely game companies out there that are trying to extract every penny we own even the ones between the seat cushions. Companies have earned negative reputations and it's largely for good reason. We're in a day and age when pre-ordering has become less of a necessity and more of a luxury. They want us to pre-order more because of that, so they start offering more and more incentives. The sentiment is that bonuses, special editions, DLC, etc. are not valuable enough to lock in a purchase before the game comes out, even going as far to say is that they are not worth anything at all. In many respects, these comments are true. The value of these incentives can be quite low and there will always be the stigma that these incentives should have been included in the base game to begin with or were outright removed from the base game to sell as an incentive. The industry can never escape that, especially when the content is on the physical disc. However, what occurred wasn't that pre-order incentives were going away, but that the incentives were getting more valuable, more bang for your buck if you would. 
So now, instead of getting poorly made and painted statues, we're getting incredibly detailed statues like the Titanfall Collector's Edition, cool helmets, beautiful art books, and the same old stuff like in-game costumes, exclusive missions, etc. The value of incentives are going up with the times because the feedback is getting louder about the quality. It's very important to say that incentives will never go away. The value of these bonuses will just keep getting higher until a ceiling is reached. In some cases, people would argue that some companies have already reached that ceiling with accusations that content was removed from the base game to supply pre-order incentives. However, there is a line that a game can cross that we as a consumer would respond, I would pre-order this game, and the industry knows that. It's not so much that in the grand scheme of things, pre-order bonuses are worth little to nothing, but rather how much value is necessary to secure the sale. And here we are. Don't pre-order games is what we hear and what we'll continue to hear for a long time if not forever. So when is it okay to pre-order a game, if at all? Hidden in all the article headlines that say, don't pre-order games, there seems to be some exceptions that they are okay with. The industry is saying, don't pre-order games unless, rather than, never pre-order games ever. What games can we pre-order? Obscure games, or for rich enough, any game that we want. I interpret this differently, however. We're being given a blanket statement when in fact we're being told, don't pre-order from the following companies that we will not mention. The list of these companies mostly involve big publishers like EA and Activision, who have taken a lot of flack for their alleged business practices. The media as a whole will likely never explicitly say, stop pre-ordering X company's game because in a lot of ways their business is built around them. Running an internet publication is difficult and keeping them in business is even harder. However, what is another common theme with the message of don't pre-order games? Look, I'm not trying to expose some grand conspiracy here. You and I both realize that review copies and embargoes keep getting closer to the launch day and sometimes after. People waiting for reviews before buying the game means more traffic to review sites. We all understand and we accept this relationship. We used to live in a day and age when reviews came out weeks before the games did. Now, if we're lucky, they come out days before. What I do want to say, though, is that the media has just as much responsibility as the consumer does. If the media wants us to rely on them to make informative decisions, they need to have our back. The ideal situation is reviews come out two plus weeks before release. Let's build to that future instead. We as the consumer and you as the media fighting for embargoes that allow consumers to make informative decisions. I pre-order games and it goes beyond this channel, my stream, and my goals surrounding them. There are games out there that I will play no matter what anybody says about them. I've grown up with these games, spent hundreds of hours in them, grown to love and hate its characters, been inspired and engrossed in their stories, and just flat out enjoy them. Why do I need to wait two plus weeks post-launch? A perfect example for me is The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. I played the first entry and was hooked. The second installment was a no-brainer and after finishing it, I'm a fan for life. What can the third installment do that will make me lose faith? Quite a few things, actually. However, do I honestly think that Nihon Falcom and Xseed or whoever is going to port it over is capable of doing those things? Absolutely not. They want to make the best game they can and I'm going to support their journey to do so. If you think that game is too obscure, then how about Kingdom Hearts? Honestly, I have literally no idea what's going on in the story, but I still love the first installment so much that Kingdom Hearts 3 is an instant purchase for me. The other installments would have been too if they weren't so spread out on so many different platforms when they released. Maybe even more important than my faith in the game and its franchise is my support and adoration for the developers who make the game what it is. These people put their all into video game. Masahiro Sakurai is the creator of the Super Smash Bros. series. This man goes to incredible lengths to make the Super Smash Bros. game a great game. Even after what I would consider an abysmal franchise installment that was Super Smash Bros. Brawl, I recognize what he and the other developers on the game put into it. They've earned my trust, and they've earned my money. These concepts extend beyond the pre-order model. Early access games are essentially unfinished ideas and prototypes. If they come from developers we trust, then why shouldn't we support that developer? And that's what it boils down to. Trust. I trust this developer, this publisher, this company, this entity, 
to deliver a project that I will enjoy. We as consumers don't trust many companies out there and that's where our attention should be focused at. Let's not lump everyone together when there's only a handful of the big guys out there causing the problems. Let's initiate the dialogue that will get them to earn our trust back so that we can feel hyped to pre-order their games too. And that's that. Hopefully I brought a different perspective to pre-ordering as a whole. Let me know your thoughts on the whole situation, whether it's a comment here on YouTube, Twitter, or while I'm streaming. Shout out to Rostico RPG, who basically reignited my interest in doing this video a lot sooner than I normally would have. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. And I hope you have a great day. Peace.